Hello everyone and welcome to Stream and Tech Now. I did a video a while back based on the old Fire Stick interface on what settings to change and I got a number of people asking me to do a refresh video with the new interface. There's been several videos published but I wanted to do a very thorough one and tell you exactly what you need to change to make your Fire Stick as safe as possible and at the same time optimizing its performance. So stick around because I'm going to show you exactly Exactly what you need to change and at the same time share a few tips coming up next. Okay, so as you can see, this is the new interface, and if you have the new one, I'm sure you're getting used to it. If you haven't already gotten used to it, it is a little bit different. Now, I'm curious. Let me know in the comments if you like the old interface or if you like the new one better. Let me know. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go all the way over to the right to that gear-looking icon and click that. That is the settings, and what we want to do is we want to check for any updates. So we want to click in on My Fire TV. So go ahead and click My Fire TV. TV and then click about right on the very top and so what we want to do is we want to check to see if your fire device has any updates and so all you do is simply go down where it says check for updates and click it and if you have an update it will tell you and I I highly recommend checking this periodically. You want to ensure that you have the latest features, firmware updates, and things like that. So definitely do this first, okay? Now, the next thing that I wanna talk about is ADB debugging. Now, should we leave it on or should we leave it off? And I'm curious what you guys do. Let me know in the comments if you guys leave it on or leave it off. Now, for those of you that don't know, ADB stands for Android debug bridge and all that means guys in a nutshell it's just a tool that lets you communicate with different devices and what it does is it creates a bridge between the different devices and many people ask should you leave it on should you leave it off and to be honest what I do um, especially at my house I, I typically leave it on and, but when I'm traveling, for example, I will turn it off. And then you have some people that will leave it off and only turn it on when they're ready to download something. But keep in mind, certain custom launchers like the mouse toggle require it to be on. So you're gonna want to leave that enabled if you use mouse toggle frequently. Now the reason why some people leave it off theoretically is because one can connect to the fire device and do various things such as installing an app and controlling device remotely it's rare but it's technically possible now the final thing that I do in my fire TV section is I wanted to point out about the restart function now I recommend um, restarting it once a week okay or maybe once every other week and doing this can really make a huge difference in clearing the cache and making your device run so much smoother okay so after my fire tv the next thing we want to do is we want to head over to display and sounds so go ahead and click in on display and sounds and once in there the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off the screensaver if you want to turn it off just click in on screensaver and it takes a couple seconds to actually load and what you can do is scroll down to where it says start time and you can change the different increments into five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes or you can choose never so to turn it off you can choose never and that's how you can turn that off so the next thing is if you have that click sound on your remote and you're sick of that click click sound. I know some people like it, some people don't, but if you want to turn it off, and this is how I personally like it, just go into audio and then turn the navigation sounds to the off position. And once you turn it to the off position, you will no longer have that click sound on your remote. So that's going to be a personal preference. It doesn't, you know, make any difference. Um, in your speed or any kind of memory or anything like that. That is just strictly a, a personal preference. So next go up to display. And what we want to do is we want to go to calibrate display. So if your aspect ratio is out of whack, you can come in here and click reset. And what you're looking for, it's kind of hard to tell, but there's an arrow on all four sides. And what you want is that point of the arrow to be on the very edge 
of the screen. So that's how you can calibrate it. If you want the, the best possible streaming experience, you're going to want your videos to be fully displayed and that's how you can calibrate the display. So that is display and sounds. Okay, so next up, we're going to go right next door to applications. So click in on applications. First thing, we're going to click in on Amazon Photos. Now, if you don't have any guests that typically connect to your device, then turn allow guest connections to the off position. Next, we're going to go back and we're going to go down to Game Circle. Now, if you're not a gamer, then you can turn this off. So click Whisper Sync for Games off. All this does is it syncs your progress and things in the cloud. So if you're not a gamer, turn it off. Then we're going to go ahead and click back. We're going to go to the App Store. Now we're going to go ahead and click Automatic Updates to the off position. And then after we have that one, we're going to go one down to External Market Links. Now certain apps can redirect you and this by turning this to don't open, then that's what we want. We don't want to be redirected. We don't want to um, haphazardly open an external link. So we want to turn the external market links to don't open. All right. So once you have that to don't open, um, we're going to go ahead to in app purchases. So go to in app purchases and we're going to want to turn in app purchases to the off position. Now this will prevent your kids from making in app purchases and it will prevent you from making any in app purchases that you shouldn't have. Okay. So that's always good to have that in the opposition. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to go right down to notifications and we're going to turn this off. Now, if you don't want to be bothered by the app store notifications, I recommend turning this one off. So this is applications. Okay, so finally, we're going to go to the biggest section, which is preferences. So I kind of did it in order. It's just one down from application. So click in on preferences. Now, parental controls. Now, if you have kids and you don't want them to enter certain sections and things like that, you can actually set yourself a pin. Um, so if you click in on parental controls, click it again, you're going to be presented with this section right here where you can actually set a pin, which is a nice option. You don't have to do it. It's up to you. So that's how you set yourself a pin. Um, if you go back, the next thing is, is we're going to go down to privacy settings. Now, once you click in on privacy settings, you're going to notice to the right, you're going to see uh, an advertising ID. So let me click on advertising ID and look to the right. There's a, there's an actual ID there. So what we want to do is want to click these off device usage data, click it, and then you're going to get this message pop up right here. Turn off. Okay. Next one, collect app usage data. We're going to click it, get this message, turn off. And there we go. And then interest based ads. We're going to turn that off. And as soon as we do, you'll notice that that advertising ID vanishes. So make sure all three of those are in the off position. All right, so once we're done with that one, we're gonna go ahead to data monitoring. Now, Amazon rolled out an update for the Fire Stick back in 2018 that enabled data monitoring by default. It allowed the company to collect user data related to app usage and device usage. Now, even though Amazon is a renowned organization, we don't want anyone using our data in any way that could co compromise our privacy. So I recommend turning this off. All right. And then once you have this off, we're going to go down to notification settings. Now we're going to make sure that the do not interrupt is in the on position. Okay. So make sure do not interrupt is set to the on position. And once you have that, we're going to go to one last thing, and that is featured content. So scroll down to featured content, and we're going to turn both of these to the off position. Allow video audio play and allow audio audio play. It's kind of a tongue twister, but make sure both of those are off. And this will prevent those movie trailers from playing, which can be quite annoying. So I recommend turning these off and that will stop both of those all together. So that's it, everyone. Just a few suggestions and tips for you to tweak so that you get the maximum performance out of your fire stick. Now, it's really a great device, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you enjoy this video and you want more like this, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that thumbs up. Share this with someone, and we'll see you next time on Streaming Tech Now.